Welcome to Just Want a Quilt, a research podcast coming out of Tulane University Law School, where we explore all kinds of things, stories about quilting, tools, field trips, maybe some famous quilters stop by, and of course, a little bit of copyright thrown in just for fun. My name is Elizabeth Townsend Gard. I'm a law professor at Tulane University Law School and an A.B. Friedman School of Business LePage faculty fellow, and I just want to quilt. So today we're talking with Megan Lundgren. We've talked to her before. We're talking to her about long arming, long arming as a business. Megan Lundgren, and I'm calling from Bingo, Oklahoma. So awesome. Um, so I would love to chat with you. I'd like to catch you up on what we're doing, but I'd also love mm-hmm. to talk to you about all things long arm, if that works for you. I have a lot Absolutely. of questions. Absolutely. Okay, cool. Um, so first, of course, how are you? How are you? You've been on, you've, we've chatted many times and I'm super psyched to have you um, chatting today. Yeah, um, things are going really well. It's been um, really busy and kind of chaotic, but that, you know, every time I think like, everything's going to be fine once this happens and it's just like more chaos like yeah. it's never you're doing long you know, arm now you're... full time right is that true yes I am doing it full time um and I kind of have a niche in doing custom quilting yeah um and semi-custom quilting um everything's hand guided and so that kind of word has spread kind of in my local community yeah. um and I live in an area that's kind of, I think it's a little bit saturated um, because I feel like there's lots of people who are doing this as a business, but um, not very many do take custom. Um, and so that me being able to take those has really kind right. of made my side of the business explode. So that's super interesting. Yeah, Cause I, like I, I what people pull- do with, long, like, let me, in case people are listening. So, what you do is you have you have a long arm machine, and for those that don't know what that is, it's a gargantuanly long, huge machine, right? Huge. You put the entire quilt mm-hmm. on it. Um, what machine? What kind of machine do you use? I use an APQS. Uh, Lucy is the model. Got it. And that's American Professional Quilting Systems. Got it. And there's a whole bunch of companies, and they all have different features and different price points and all that. Um, and mm-hmm. so when people take in when. Um, we're going to be doing a series on long arms and what they are and sort of business in long arms. So, um, and I would love that this part, I would love for this to be part of it. Um, so, but just sort mm-hmm. of to make for basic so people can understand what we're talking about. So they're expensive machines. They're all expensive. They're all expensive. Mm-hmm. And people um, yep. often have businesses where they take in people's quilting and they quilt them. And that's what you did. And you started, you had a regular job, and you have so much work that you don't have that job anymore. I think it's one of the viable mm-hmm. places for having a, a, being in the profession is the long arm mm-hmm. business. I don't know if it always will be, but at least right now. And do you feel that way too? Have you? Yeah, I do. Um, it's, it, it, it may just depend too on the person and, and definitely like what kind of income streams they have before. I was working um in a university system working as a mental health counselor and, and my income's close but it's not necessarily always comparable yeah um but i'm also not having to commute an hour and a half to work anymore yeah it's every just a day diff- it's a different thing and it's a trade-off right it's a it, it was a trade-off too um it can be one of those if people i i definitely think the most valuable like where the income stream can be the most consistent is people who are turning out edge to edge work which is the same pattern all over the entire quilt and especially if they have like a computerized robotic system yeah um they can sometimes you know do several quilts in a day right um and, and when with custom quilting there's and this is kind of the thing where i'm trying to figure out my pricing structure again now that this has become my niche um of making sure that it is a viable income stream yeah you know yeah I do and that I'm and trying to probably transition to my custom work being hourly versus a square inch charge so how much do you charge now for custom work um I 
start at three cents uh, per square inch. And so, and that's kind of a light custom where I may do probably nothing with rulers. Um, but, you know, I'm going to have different border designs and um, maybe different, you know, free motion designs inside of sashing and free motion designs inside, uh, you know, inside each block. Yeah. Uh, and those could be standard across the quilt or they may want something kind of different throughout the entire quilt um and and density is kind of the biggest driver of where that price point where it starts to go up is how dense they want their quilting because of course the denser the quilting is that's more time consuming yeah and then sometimes that's hard to figure out until the quilt is on the frame and you're working on it to figure out really what density is going to look best and also where that person's price point is. And And so how do you negotiate, how do you figure that out? Like, you know, the size of the quilt before it goes on. So you can, do you give them a range or do they choose or like, and also I just have to say that there's a lot of noise suddenly on my side. Can you hear it? There's like, I don't hear it. Okay, good. So I don't know if it's getting picked up by the, we might have to redo this a little bit if it, it's there. Okay. It's, there's a big water leak outside, and they're ripping up the street. So, um, well, they it's just storming started. at my house too. It is. <laughs> I don't hear the storm, yeah. so that's good. So we got a lot of water issues yeah. on each side. Um, yeah. So take me through. So I say, I I bring a quilt to you, and mm-hmm. you say to me what you say. How does I, I would it... usually start with, "What are you thinking for this? Yeah. Um, you know, are you wanting something?" custom or are you wanting the same pattern across the entire top and you said custom I said oh, okay great um what what kind of budget are we working with and I've I've learned to start with that because yeah. sometimes if I say what do you want and then they have pretty elaborate ideas of what they want on their quilt and then they tell me they have a budget of a hundred dollars and I'm like oh, okay like right. you know well this is what we can do within that so I yeah. usually start That's by finding nice. out yeah, I, I figure out, like, find out what their budget is. And, and sometimes I can show them some examples of, like, size quilts inside that budget now that I've gotten a larger portfolio and show them, you know, this is a similar size quilt that I did within the same budget range Got to it. give you an idea. And do you have of, the actual you know, quilt or do you have pictures of the quilts so that they can see them? Pictures. Pictures, pictures of the quilt, of the quilt so yeah. they can see. Yeah, okay, so, and, and what for, kind of budget do you think someone needs for coming to someone like you? Like, what's the kind of, like... Um, I have a $40 minimum charge right now, uh-huh. so for, like, even, like, a wall hanging that's, you know, 20 yeah. by 20, uh, the minimum charge is it's just is not worth 40. it if it's anything less than that, right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I mean, just the time to load something, even if it's yeah. small, it's still going to... I've got to I've gotta load it, um, and I live in a rural area that I also don't, and this is, everyone is different. I don't like people coming out to my place necessarily. Uh Yeah. Um, mainly for insurance liability, my studio is an upstairs. So even if they do come to my place, I'm not going to have to walk up my stairs. And, um, so I've got, a you know, coverage for anything that happens to things that are inside my place, but not necessarily if somebody trips and falls down my stairs. Got it. And so I don't want them coming to my house. Um, so I'm, I'm driving to meet people. Um, you are? At local quilt shops. Oh, interesting. And sometimes we'll, we'll meet um, in parking lots and things like that. At, most yeah. of the time, if it's, if it's a new person, I want to sit down with them. So we'll meet at a coffee shop or at the quilt shop. Yeah. Where we can sit down and we can pull their quilts out and things like that. Um, yeah. So if, if, so say it's like a 50 by 50 size quilt or yeah. well, make it a twin size, a 70 by 90 okay. quilt. Um, I would need a calculator to figure out. I mean, we're, we're looking over a hundred dollars for yeah. a light, light custom. Light custom. And, right. mm-hmm. and are you having them pay before, like, how is the payment system working? Are you having them... And, like, what if they don't like it? Do you have fussy people that are, like, that wasn't what I wanted or they try to get out of paying or anything? Like, do you have them prepay? I I, I give people, uh, in custom work, I'll give them the option if they want to put down a deposit mm-hmm. or make payments while 
they're waiting for their quilt to be quilted so that way it's not necessarily as large of a bill yeah um but i won't but payment is due or, or they can wait and pay the whole thing at the end um, yeah. because i have their quilt yeah so it's sort of so like, right right you've got this not, right you've got something valuable so it's not like they're gonna value. walk away from mm-hmm. it interesting yeah so i don't have a bit some other people do require deposits um i don't um i haven't gotten burned yet yeah um, how, how long is it so sorry payments do when the payments quilt is finished it. so how long does it take you so if you do that let's the 70 by 90 i'm gonna do some i'm gonna do some math while you do it so the 70 okay. by 90 is okay so like custom would be like three cents but like let's say they're like i let's say it's like you know the gypsy wife quilt right didn't you do what did you do uh-huh. one for us like that is ridiculous yeah. right like you donated uh-huh. to us your time which was incredible and it was the most gorgeous thing i've ever seen so tell me like uh what how high up do the custom prices go like how do you under you know how do you so if we're at 70 times 70, let's see how much, is that 70 times 90? People are like, you do really boring things online. I'm like, I totally do. Uh, so is it it's like $210 I would, for, did I do the math? Seven, right? Yeah. Yeah. That, I guess that would be right. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. So are you, do you prefer then the bigger quilts because they're going to bring in more money or do you don't care? I, I mean, I like I like a good twin size quilt. Um, yeah. When we start getting up to queens and kings, mm-hmm. um, I mean those are just such huge monster yeah. size quilts that th- those will be on the frame for several weeks. Oh my goodness! Um, and do you take? So they're not. How my, do you do? You keep one on. Like what happens when you have? Do you have a system? Do you use like zippers or something to take them off and on so you can do other quilts, or are you just focused on that rest- one quilt? Most of the time, I try to just do one at a time. I've had some scenarios where I've had some something has because because whenever you're scheduling out a quilt and you know, okay, this quilt's probably going to take two weeks to do. Right. Well, then life things come up too, and yes. so it's sort of like I end up with a sick, sick kid, or we have right. uh, live on a ranch, and crazy things can happen with the cows that take me out of my work for the day, and I may have an edge to edge quilt that really needs to get turned back over to a customer so I'll yeah. use, I use red snappers you do um yeah and so I try not to take stuff on and off because it's just hard to finagle especially a larger quilt it totally is it's like uh, a, it's a, it's really hard so do you like the red snappers we have red snappers for those listening what a red snapper is is it's like a there's like a pole inside the leader and the leader is what you connect the quilt to and then you snap on on top this piece so that do you pin it first or do you use the the leaders like I'm having trouble being accurate using the red snappers I'm curious how you're making sure that it stays straight with those um have you ever watched the video that is called loading Lori's way no it's Mm -hmm. it's a gamble machine yeah um and she uses pins yeah but I load similarly to her um but with my red snapper so I load I, I kind of line up from the front first. Yeah. Um, and I have like some of those short pieces that are yeah. like the, you know, two inch cut two inches short and I'll snap those on and kind of get that lined up. Okay. Um, and I usually try to load salvage to salvage cause it will stay on grain, um, a little bit better. So what do you mean salvage. by salvage to salvage? You're putting them with the salvage on one side and you're putting the other salvage on the other side. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Yep, and um, so I load that front first, Mm -hmm. and then I pull the backing, like, under, I've got a, like, a a bar, a leveling bar in the Mm -hmm. back, so, and I I pull it under that, and then back over the top bar, that's actually what I will attach to with my leaders, and I pull it kind of all, you know, taut, and then I roll up the backing, and it usually will pull that backing Nice if I've done salvage to salvage, it'll pull it square. Interesting. Um, and then I will attach the backing once that has rolled. So, so watch that YouTube video. She does yeah. it with pins. Um, okay. But sure. I, I do it with my leaders. All that right. Way. Loading the long, uh, Lori's, loading Wait. Lori's way. Yeah, I see it's on YouTube. Uh-huh. It's really cool. Okay, we won't watch it now. I'll try to keep. I'll try to be reasonable. Okay. So you. So yeah. okay. So the quilts are like about. Like a hundred, you know, 
you're taking in projects. It's taking you. So I'm trying to understand the economics of this. So you're doing it by mm-hmm. hand. You're not doing it by Me automation. Too. How many quilts are you able to do if some of them are taking a really long time? You know what I mean? Like, I, like what's your mm-hmm. goal economically in terms of these quilts? Does that make sense? Like you've got to be yeah, thinking about um, your time versus the money you're bringing in and how many you can do mm-hmm. and all that. Yeah, and that's kind of where I've kind of reached a wall because for a while I was I, I had more edge to edge work yeah. than I did custom work, but now mm-hmm. that has flip flopped. Um, and so I actually shut down my schedule whenever I reached bookings for the end of this year. Interesting. Um, so, and how do that people? Way I can, and do you, are they? Are you booking it because you can see the quilt and you can say, "Oh, this is going to take three days" or something like that? That's what I tried to do, but yeah. because. The, it's sometimes hard to estimate with the custom work or I can run into something that takes a little bit longer than I anticipated. My schedule kind of snowballed a little bit. And so, um, and when you say three days, what do you mean by that? Like how many hours do you think you're putting into, have you calculated like the amount of time per square inch you're spending on different patterns or anything like that? Yeah. yeah, and that's how I really try to quote. I kind of try to quote backwards. And so when I'm sitting with somebody and talking to them about their quill and figuring out what they want, I start estimating how many hours is this probably going to take me. Mm-hmm. And once I think I have like a good idea. So if I think this is a 15-hour quilt, um, then I try to figure between 20 and $25 an hour. Interesting. Um, and then what do I need to price my square inches to recoup that? And I was not doing a great job at that, you know, six months, yeah. a year ago mm-hmm. at it. And I feel like I've got a much better grasp on it. And I'm, I'm probably going to tra- start transitioning my higher end custom work just over to a straight hourly rate. Yeah. Because um, you can guess after how much. the New Year's. So you can guess how many hours it is, and then if it's more or less, adjust the price. Is that what you thought? Adjust the price, yeah. Yeah, and and also, too, you know, if I end up way off, and I'm not going to make necessarily – this is the way I look at it, is probably a plus or minus several-hour window, you know, that I'm quoting this at 20 hours. You're giving them the buffer. So you're saying it's going to take 10 – you're you're paying for 10, but you're giving them 12 hours as a buffer or something like that. Well, no, they'll go ahead and pay that 12. But if I really screw that quote up and I end up taking 18 hours, but yeah. I quoted them 10, Got it. I have a hard time charging them eight more hours. Because you mis- got, think, misjudged, right? Because I misjudged. But yeah. if I say, you know, it's 10 plus or minus two. Right. So that's smart. That way, you know, it could be 12 or it could be eight. But they're paying but, for the 10. But they're paying for that. But if I misquote something so poorly that it's like double the price, like I... I have trouble with that from a yeah. customer service standpoint. I would not yeah. be happy if I was. No, and it's hard. You I know, mean, the customer yeah, in that are, scenario. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, do you mm-hmm. um, have certain patterns? Like, how do you communicate the patterns to them of what they can choose pattern wise? Um, we look a lot of times through like my Instagram and some of my past work because I do yeah. kind of have a distinctive hand. Yeah. Um, and how my quilting looks and what yeah. I can do and not do. Cause sometimes people look at things that are, are, are re- they're computerized patterns and mm-hmm. I can't necessarily do a snowflake or I could do a snowflake, but it's going to take a, a lot longer time and how, you know, right. Because I'm going to need to use rulers and draft it out and, um, all of yeah. those things. So that's going to be a different price point than somebody who put computerized, you know, snowflakes. Right. through a border um and so yeah I, I try to figure out what they're looking for and then I let them know what I can do within the range yeah. we look through some of my past pictures um I, I do lots of feathers and lots of swirls and um a lot of swirl based um mm-hmm. quilting uh-huh so things that can kind of branch off of the uh, like a, a swirl and different right. types of swirls I like that yeah um, I love it. Yeah. And um, so, because sometimes people will say they love my work and then we start talking about what they're looking for and it's nothing that's necessarily natural for my hand to like, yeah. for me to do. Yeah. And so it's also trying to figure out too is what work should I take and what should I refer on to somebody that that's more suited to their strength. And I've got kind of a good network of people I work with, 
you know, here in my community that I can say like, this is better suited for, you know, my friend Katie to do. Right. Interesting. Well, so interesting because mm-hmm. with free motion quilting, it really is the artist. Like you're like you're looking for the mm-hmm. artist that that will. It's an it's it's another layer of art on your work, um, and that's mm-hmm. uh, so interesting. Yeah, um, so interesting. Um, okay, well, I think that's super great. Now, tell me, like, on the business side of it, like, do you what mm-hmm. what do you think? Was it hard to figure out the business part of it or did that come naturally? Sort of if there are people listening and they're trying to get a long arm business up and running, what should they know about it before they sort of jump in? Um, pieces of it came naturally, other pieces don't. And it's, I'm constantly learning and reevaluating and adjusting. So, yeah. um, and, and you do see, especially if you hang out in some of the quilt groups and things, people say, like, I've got my machine. And they're ready to like sort of like hang their shingle out and they're like, you know, can you, everybody send me their intake forms or how do you do this? Um, And I caution against, against it, but not at the same time, not uh, because you're not going to learn the business side of it unless you start doing it. Right. I totally agree. Um, But I do feel like you do have to be confident in your work that you're ready to take customers money for your work. Right. Um, Was that a hard moment? Because I feel like, you know, we are trying to mm -hmm. do a little bit of that here just to experience it. And I Mm -hmm. can't, I can't do it. Like, I feel like I've been practicing and working for a year. And I still feel like, I don't know if I could, I I just think they're going to be really mad at me. (laughs) That's Mm -hmm. my, you know, like if I take money, like it's really different if I'm like, hey, sure, I'll quilt that for you, right? Because I've run out of, I've run out of tops, so I'm, like, taking other other people's stuff to practice on. But it's, like, Uh I don't know. I just, like, I really don't want someone mad at me. It's really, like, that's, like, I think I'm such a, like, dog, right? I just want people to be pleased, and I, like, that. that's freaking me out, you know? How was that jump to getting paid for your work? It was was a little bit... You you know, I sort of still, like, I felt like a fraud, Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. initially and it took a minute to get over that um and luckily you know I'd worked with um one of the ladies at the local shop and I just kind of kept showing her my work and she's like all right now you're ready yeah um you should you could do this you should do this um and I started with like I sort of had like four or five patterns stitched out on some samples and I yeah. started as like here's a new business special that you know this is going to be my rate for these kind of all over free motion patterns and um, did you put it, it like it as a, did, did you do it at like two cents or would, were you worried about like so the other thing we've got is like if we underprice it then the people in the industry that are here will get mm-hmm. upset that we're underpricing them right so i know just, it's so did you just price price it at like two cents a square like did you even do it lower than two cents when you started i was so the the kind of standard base rate in my area is a cent and a half interesting um for like the meander, really yeah. loose quilting as a cent yeah. and a half. Two cents is kind of the standard for what you would call like your average density um, quilting. Okay. Um, and there's a lot of places that do everything for a cent and a half. And there's other places that do, you know, their, their starting point is two cents even for like a basic meander. Um, I started a new business special for like sort of like the months of, uh-huh. I think it was like, November and I started around Christmas, which is kind of another good tip for somebody getting in because you could take some things in that, I mean, I'm not taking anything for Christmas now. Um, and it's, uh, you know, I remember you talking to this about this, that because you were new business and everyone was booked up, you were like, Mm -hmm. Oh, I'll take it. Right. Cause you were like, Mm -hmm. you didn't have, you were, you could get stuff in and out for Christmas and that was really advantageous Mm -hmm. to you. I remember you talking about that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, that was a really, that, great time to start because I got some cold calls and I have worked with a local shop. And um, so I started at the new business special was, it was a discount for my base rate. So that way I'm not pricing starting out with a base rate that's way lower than yeah. the market average. But also I think it's, it, it, and I'll get to kind of the main point of this in a second, but so it's a, a cent and a third, so like 0.013 uh-huh. for these loose are quilted and I took those for two months uh-huh. at that rate. And then my base went to a cent and a half 
And then within six months, my base was at 0.017. Um, but I think it's important for people to look at their prices and adjust prices because you don't, you're experience, you, you gain experience. Um, yeah. and, and there's value in giving your quilts to people who have experience or mm-hmm. have quilted and entered shows and been recognized that way that there's, that's a value add to that person's art right. going onto your quilt. Right. Um, and so people, I think we have to look at our pricing structures and look at how we're adjust need to be adjusting prices up. Um, yeah. because it also gives entry to new people into the market. Yeah. Um, and even in my market, where I kind of consider some things a little bit saturated, mm-hmm. all of us are busy and bucked. Yeah. You know, I was at the quilt shop that um, her daughter runs uh, computerized edge to edge. Yeah. And she had quilts like stacked up to the ceiling in there. Wow. Um, you know, she's, we're all busy. That's amazing. Um, so how mm-hmm. many quilts do you think you're doing? Like, is it overwhelming? That's the other part that really is kind of worrying me mm-hmm. is, is it overwhelming your life and are you still enjoy doing it? Because like how, how, how much time are you quilting every day? Um, I can probably do five to six hours consistently, daily. Yeah. Um, if I start getting over that, you know, my feet, you know, it's like my feet yeah, start yeah. to get sore, yeah, my neck and my back and things all, like that. You know, your whole life falls apart, right? You're like, you know, you, you've you yeah. reached your max, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that five to six hours is kind of where I'm at per day. Mm-hmm. Um it's probably different for some computerized people who need to be keeping an eye on their machine, but they're not bent over their machine yeah, right. necessarily for that whole time. Um, yeah. I try to limit how many quilts I have in my possession. Yeah. So when I start scheduling, I also say like, okay, I'm going to contact you two weeks before you reach, you know, before I get to your quilt. And I think it's going to be, you know, November, the beginning of November before I'm going to get to your quilt. So I'm going to call you, like, I'm going to check in October 15th or whatever. Interesting. To, so, because I have some people who are booking me while they're still working on their quilts as ah, well. Clever. Yes. Yeah. Um, which is what I've encouraged people to do from, like, my current customer list because mm-hmm. sometimes they'll wait and then I'm like, all right, I'll have it to you in four months. Right. Um. And so I've tried to encourage them to start pre-booking. Um, and, and if I they are not finished, uh-huh. you know, if they're not all the way finished, I've got somebody that I can usually slide into that spot and bump right. them. Right, give them back. more time. Great. That's really yeah. fun. And it's sort of my rule of thumb is sort of like if I've checked in with them three times and they still don't have it done, then, you know, I'm, I'm going to clear you from my schedule. Contact me whenever you have it done. And yeah. We'll, we'll get you back in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's, that also helps so I'm not, so I don't have 10, 12, 15 quilts sitting in my house. Yeah. Um, I'm not the most organized person either, but that's just kind of one of the ways that I try to stay a little more organized. Yeah. Interesting. I love it. Mm-hmm. Um, do you feel like you carry other insurance because you're having like one of a kind quilt stuff? Did you feel like you needed to up here like you I imagine you started like an LLC or some sort of businessy thing did you uh-huh. I'm yeah. a sole I've, I'm set up as a sole proprietor yeah um and I just kind of have a writer on my machine and, the, and on the um quilts that come in yeah. um that I can replace material value of them yeah um it's insurance it's really hard to that they typically will not reimburse and this is my experience. Other people may have other feedback, but they typically aren't going to reimburse labor. Yeah. Um, Which is crazy. And that's kind of one of the... Right. Yeah. It's one of the tricky things you hear when people are talking about mailing quilts back and forth, too, yeah. is that typically, like, the post office is only going to reimburse the cost of those materials. They're not necessarily going to reimburse... Do you think that you know, if, you got an, if you got, you know, a appraiser to do the quilt top mm-hmm. that you would be able to, like... I don't know if you would, I mean, I don't think it's worth it because it would be too financially expensive to do that. But I, I think about, like, those that are praising for insurance purposes, quilts, at what stage, like, should they be doing that? Like, do you see people doing that at all for these quilts? I don't. So interesting. I don't, I, I don't, I'm not aware of anybody getting things regularly appraised. You know, yeah. I appraised, I had a show quilt that went to um, 
Paducah uh -huh. and I had it appraised while it was there. Um, and that's that the only so time I've ever. That's so great. Yeah. I, I was, love it. Yeah. And that was such an, a, a big learning experience. <laughs> um, putting something into the show circuit. And yeah. I was so incredibly fortunate to have the first thing I'd ever attempted get in. That's so um, cool. I was really, my, my expectations were low and I was really kind of blown away that it got into the shows that I entered it into, but that's the only thing I've ever had a, a praise. Yeah. Um, and I should send you a copy of that appraisal so you can see yeah, it. And really it's, it. yeah. it's a praise for essentially the um, cost of materials and what w probably almost exactly what I would have assessed like the uh, labor if the labor cost not it, it's the artistry is really not taken into account with really? it necessarily I, I'm, That's interesting I'm looking and weird, at it right yeah I would I would guess that things that have won ribbons uh -huh. um or from like more famous quilters that yeah. that probably adds value to it but I was looking at it and I mean like it's pretty much the cost of my materials and it probably would have been like a 18 or a, you know two cents per square inch wow, type quilting that's and that's and that's about what it was what the appraise, appraisal came out at that's but yeah because I mean that's like you're looking at like 75 dollars to get a quilt appraised um and so I think for I you know and it's kind of been one of the things on my to-do list is I need to get some of the quilts that are in my house appraised yeah and some of the heirlooms and things like that I think that that's probably valuable but it's I I don't have any customers right. that I'm aware of that are getting their things appraised. I've thought about, I'm, a, I'm working on a, a wedding quilt, which uh -huh. my friend's already married, but uh -huh. <laughs> it's not done yet. That's uh, and I thought about it. getting yeah. it. A, yeah. I, I'm thinking about getting it appraised before I actually gift it to her so I can give her the appraisal with it. Yeah. Um, I've heard some appraisers talk about that. And that also kind of, kind of heirloom type gifts that makes them more aware of, you know, what the, yeah. what the value of those is and if anything does happen to it you know that they have some you know path to right. interesting huh. yeah. and it's interesting like if you did become in like an appraiser and you were certified I'm curious how many uh people would be doing that you know what I mean to have it as an mm -hmm. you know could it be a cumber standard thing or is it just too expensive you know like why aren't people doing more I mean it seems like, okay, this is me riffing. It seems like if you appraised the quilts that we're making and then it became standard mm -hmm. that you had, when you gave somebody a present, you also gave them the appraisal certificate. So just like you'd like mm -hmm. so forth, that people would start recognizing like the work that's in it. I mean, it has to mean that the appraisal understands the work too. But like, because mm -hmm. there's no commodification, I mean, they're priceless, precious things, but we're mm -hmm. in a commodified world. There's this kind of, problem right that that mm -hmm. you know and I think the closest we get is to how you when you quilt stuff right because um we are paying for the quilting and so that helps us a little bit but that certainly doesn't take into account the top or anything else right uh -huh. so I don't know you know yep I'm confused it's tricky it's tricky right uh-huh yeah and I looked into I mean you've got to go take um the class at Paducah. Right. Um, it's a lot of work a to lot, right? uh, become an appraiser. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Yeah, I'm looking at their website now. It's a three-day appraisal skills course, and then you have to prove that you can do it, uh, mm -hmm. right? Uh, yep. There's a whole bunch of studying. Is there a test? It looks like there's a test. I think there's a test, yeah. Oh, my gosh. And it's a... Like, really, like, you've got to kind of find somebody almost like kind of apprentice under. And I think that that's one of the other things, too. Some of those appraisers are probably getting up in age. Yeah. Um, and that there's not very many. Yeah. That are actively taking. Yeah. Quilts, so. So interesting. All right. I totally want, I'm like, like one more thing to add to the list. I Because you have a reading list. Like, how could you not want to be an appraiser? Because you have to, like, read a bunch of stuff. Uh-huh. Uh <laughs> 
<laughs> you're not required oh. to take read the books they say <laughs> i'm like mm-hmm. you should totally be required <laughs> I'm like all about like the reading the books. I'm like, hmm, I should probably the library reading, all yeah. these books um, just because I'm like, I want to read that. Um, yeah. How funny. Okay. Um, so how is it going? How do you feel about doing this? This is like a big thing. Like you quit your job. You're doing uh-huh. this. Your family, like everything. Would you do it again? Are you enjoying it? Did you, do you find that you're not enjoying it? Like where are you in the whole like, is this making you happy kind of place? It is, but it's funny. It's kind of it kind of depends on the day. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I get that. Um, so overall, yes, um, I am pleased. But also, I mean, I am look have constantly kind of continued to look ahead and figure out like how long term sustainability um, yeah. and trying to grow my income. Right. Um, I right. am really really glad that I kind of learned and capitalized on trying to, you know, expand my free motion skills. Uh-huh. Um, but I, the money is really in the robotic computerized edge edge systems. Um, yeah. Do you think so you'll ever I, do that? Why is the money in that? Tell me a little bit how that money is different and would you ever consider doing it? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the, uh, I, I think it's just because, you know, I, I max out at like, five, six hours, I can do, you know, an eight or 12 hour day. Um, right. And then young, you know, too, because I'm in my thirties. Yeah. Um, right. How long can you do? It, what's, what's the real, like, right. Like, and the other thing I think is kind of interesting about this, we have, we have the automated stuff now we have, we, we, so we're looking yeah. at sort of trying to understand And First of all, I think what we're trying to do I'm kind of freaking out about taking people's quilts in. I'm not joking about that part. That's really mm-hmm. worrying me, right? Because I'm just like, I can see where their mistake is or I can see where they'd be like, what did you do there, right? Um, mm-hmm. So that's they, the, don't. But they don't. They don't. They don't. They don't. <laughs> that makes me, you they know, don't. We're, we're um, the most critical of all of our mistakes. I um, know. It's terrible. Um, the other know. part is that like for the for Just Want to Quilt and our mission um, – I really want to sort of make uh, resources available, and we have we're, we we are just sort of creating a deal that we can work with one of our local shops to teach people how to do this. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's kind of the you know if you give a you know the whole fisherman thing, right? So I think that like that's part of what we're really looking at is like not just like okay, here's how to use the machine, but like sessions where it's like okay, let's practice this, let's practice that, because it takes a lot to Uh be good at this and so I think people would more appreciate just saying I just want to send my quilt in I don't want to learn all this this is too much um or Uh they would be really empowered by being able to um do it themselves you know Uh I don't know yeah absolutely because I teach um domestic free motion quilting at a local shop and it's sort of another quilter sort of judged why was I teaching you know I was teaching people you know, my job essentially. And I'm like, I no. get, I yeah. probably get a handful of referrals out of every single class I teach. So interesting. Um, because people are either like, Oh, you, you take people's quotes <laughs> here. I'm going to send you my quotes. Right. Now, like though, I've like, done this. Right. <laughs> exactly. Like, look, I don't want to do like, that is so true of so many things in my life where I'm like, uh-huh. yeah, I took a class. I'm like, yeah, I don't, I, can I pay you to do this? Cause I, I don't want to do this. <laughs> it's like the best yeah. advertising. <laughs> be like, I know I am so not and, doing this. And even people who, you know, that do take off on their own, uh-huh. you know, they still will give my name out to, you know, friends yeah. or family that are looking for quilting yeah. um, done professionally. And so, yeah, I found that it is, been great advertising to teach people how to do my skill yeah um, yeah it's funny isn't it, it I love it it's just so it, counterintuitive it, in some way right it really is uh-huh. it's just like you're gonna do what <laughs> you know? yeah yeah and it's really empowering to see you know when people do take off you know and I'm happy if uh-huh. people learn the skill and are taking off on their own um the very first class I did I had an 18 year old who skipped school that day to come to my class. Oh, that's great. Um, which I just thought was, that was the coolest thing ever yeah, to have totally. someone young that was, and you know, jumped both feet in. Yeah. Um, but 
yeah, I think that education is important. And, and two, because it does kind of show people more what does happen when they send their, you know, quilt off to the yeah quilter. Right. If, if they're coming in and learning those skills. Right. They totally, yeah. Mm-hmm. And they don't really realize, like, mm-hmm. now do you have, I have, like, a, I'm, I know we're almost on, I promise, I have, I told you I had a bazillion questions for you. Um, oh, do I've you, got a, no, a ton of time. So. You do. Okay. So when you, when people drop off their quilts, how, are they perfectly squared? Did they do the thing where there's enough batting and backing for them? Like, like how do you train them to not make your life really difficult with the quilt itself? Um, whenever we're initially talking about scheduling, uh-huh. I kind of have a checklist that I go off with them. I like five inches on each side. You do? Um, yeah, because if I'm using rulers and I have a ruler base and, uh, you know, it just, it always makes sure that my ruler base is clear of my side clamps. Yeah. Um, even with them raised up, you know, cause I put something like a, you know, yardstick or something underneath my straps that hold the quilt tight. It makes sure that that ruler base is always clear. Um, you know, I ask for it to be square and I, I ask all of those things and, you know, most of the time they're not. Yeah. So, um, I, I tell people five inches and in hopes that I will get four, you yeah. know, on each do you, side. Do you charge them for squaring it up or do you just square it up? Like they're backing? Yeah. When it comes in all uh, weird. Um, if it's really weird, um, then you charge them. Then it's a, it's a, it's a, it's kind them. of a lesson, right? Like, um, yeah. yeah. How are you squaring them up? Are you just good at squaring it up? I got this tool, but it's not helpful. It was like a, a laser. I was like, I, I thought this is how I'm going to square it up. But how do you make sure it's square? Like, do you have a particular strategy for that? Um, or you just it, really, like, you know, yeah. a lot of times I, you know, will fold it into quarters or if you, if you drape it over your long arm, you're going to be able to tell if yeah. there's weird you know, if it's right. when you put or... it on, it just like, yeah, you can just totally, mm-hmm. it's so funny because I was teaching, um, somebody came, uh, and they're learning on the, the long arm and I was saying how important it was to be square and we put it on and you can kind of see like, it, you know, it, it gets all bunchy and it doesn't go straight. And then when we took it off and we put it, I'm like, so, and you could just see like, it was more like a triangle than it was like square. Mm-hmm. And it was like, okay, next time That's she fair. came, she was like, okay, I've learned my lesson. <laughs> like it really needs to be square or I spend way too much time pinning and unpinning. And uh-huh. like so. Yeah. And so people opt to not have things like that fixed. And then I just load it and quilt it. Really? You know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not, like, my favorite thing to do, but if they don't want to, you know, pay yeah. the, out, you know. They don't want to do it, know, then you're going to just do it. Yeah, interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And loading salvage to salvage definitely yeah. helps. It does. I'll try mm-hmm. that. I'm going to put one on today, so I'll try to do salvage to salvage and see how that goes. That's interesting. Yeah. Because you don't have as and much give, best... is that right? Mm-hmm. Yep, you don't have as much give or stretch or. Yeah. Um, I mean, one of the biggest benefits, too, of hand guiding everything is mm-hmm. that if the quilt top even isn't exactly square, I mean, I'm guiding it by hand, so yeah. I'm not going to have computerized patterns moving across it that you can yeah. tell are off. Yeah, it's so interesting. I, that's totally true. And one of the things, that, mm-hmm. <laughs> this is a couple of things that we've been noti- I've been noticing is I can't walk away from the it. That I, it's mm-hmm. just, I have to... Because the quilts aren't going to be, like, you need to kind of guide the fabric a little bit more. And if mm-hmm. you just leave it, then bad things happen. What about drawing? Did you think taking a drawing class was important? How did you improve your skills on your the drawing aspects of free motion quilting? I think I took, it, it just depends on the instructors, too. Because whenever I first started, I was really lucky. Jamie Wallen happened to be, like, in my community teaching mm-hmm. a class at a shop. Yeah. Um. And I went to two days of classes. Yeah. Um, and it none of it was hands on. We were paper and pencil. Yeah. The entire time, so it was like twelve hours of like drawing feathers and drawing swirls and drawing vines. And um, I mean, I have like a huge stack from that class. That's just what we drew, and we just drew over and over and over again. Interesting. And that, um, do you think that that changed how you were doing it? That that two day class of drawing, 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 and having oversight. Absolutely. But that was the most valuable thing that I did, you know, outside of buying my machine. Interesting. Very interesting. 
Interesting. So now I'm yeah. at, is it Quilter's Apothecary? Is that where he's at? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yep. I right. like his rulers, too. Yeah, you do? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've got a couple of his rulers. Where are they located? They're located, oh, in Indiana. Interesting. Okay. Indiana. I was going to say, so, it's an I state. It's up there in the Midwest. It's an I state. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. They do edge-to-edge mail-in quilting here. Mm-hmm. Two cents a square, like that, their company, and they do two cents per inch for all designs, edge to edge. With it, mm-hmm. interesting. Huh. Yeah, With yeah. Seventy five. The, the mail in business. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's talent. It's that talent that's. Yeah. Part of you know, making sure that he's covering. Yeah. You know, their cost and right. Um, all the talent that they have in that studio so yeah right amazing it's not it is you know it's not just like oh just anybody just who you know who's the cheapest one to do it I mean you can do it that way but this is mm-hmm. you're, you're and hiring an artist that that's right? appropriate for right right, you know? right right so you're giving it to your grandkid and whatever it's going to get washed a thousand times yeah. and it doesn't really matter right but a wedding yeah. quilt or an heirloom quilt you may want to like you know shop around for the artist that you want not just mm-hmm. you know whoever happens to be handy. So I don't know. That's just happens my to be handy. Yeah. And quilting for show. I mean, we didn't even touch on that, but yeah, mm-hmm. that's a whole other thing, you know? Yeah. And quilting it's for a, show, it's a do whole you, other. Yeah. Do you charge more for that? If you, if you're know that it's going into a show. Most everything I've done so far has just gone into like the local, like, you know, your County fair, yeah. um, something into the state fair. And, the biggest thing I, you know, I've asked people too is, you know, do they want their starts and stops buried? Yeah, right. Because I'm going to charge more, more for that's burying right. the totally. starts and stops. Yes. Than uh, just kind of tacking and cutting. Um, yeah. But I've had some things that I've quilted and then they decided to enter into a show. So I didn't even know ahead of oh time. Oh my gosh. Um, so, and it won, it won the first place ribbon in the that's so county great. fair down. That's so cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I do ask, um, and I, and I give them, you know, kind of some of the options and let them know what judges may or may not be looking for, you know, um, and and show quilts and yeah. And so I've never, I, but if I was being approached for something going into a national show, I mean, I feel like that that's a whole nother ball game too. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm going to pay, if I make a little mistake on something like you know my swirl right. I, I swirl the wrong direction and it's not no it's it's in a film it's not noticeable I, you know I'm not picking those out um the, those little tiny mistakes yeah. but right. if they something's matter. going into a national right. show like right. for somebody I'm gonna probably pick that out oh my gosh um, so when I quilt I always feel like this is gonna be the thing I finally enter into a show and I'm like so proud and then I like, get to like <laughs> About a third of the way in and I make a mistake, then I'm like, yeah, this is never going into a show. <laughs> like every single time. I'm like, this is the show piece. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> no, it's not the show. <laughs> I don't know. It's just ridiculous. I do it every single time. Yeah. I quilt everything. I mean, whether I'm piecing or quilting, <laughs> whatever it is, I have grand illusions that are like dashed about halfway through whatever I'm doing. You just need to throw it in and see what happens. I know. It's true. It's very you true. You know, whenever I got my judge's card back from Paducah, you know, yeah. I, you know I, I felt like there's a thousand mistakes in this piece right. and I could name them all off. Right. And they had like one critical comment. Really? <laughs> it was like. They yeah, didn't see them. Um, That's, or they ignored them. Interesting. I ignore it. It wasn't, you know, it didn't majorly impact the whole piece. Yeah. Um, because when I made that piece, I was just quilting. I didn't really have a plan to put it into a show, and then yeah. it just sort of grew into this other monster. Uh-huh. Um, and then I was like, I should. I, I just want to see what will happen. Yeah. Um, but, so I didn't bury. I didn't bury my start and stop. You didn't. Um, no, because I had like a week and a half, of, like where I could quilt something for myself. Yeah. In between customer quilts, <laughs> and so it was like I got to get this thing done, and then I got right. it done in time to put it into my state fair. Oh, that's funny. Um, yeah, and so that was the critical is that, that they could notice my starts and stops because they weren't buried. That's you really know, interesting. Tied off and buried. So interesting. Mm-hmm. I love it. I totally love it. 
Um, well, yeah. as always, I totally love talking with you, and we need to spend time I know. together. It's fun. Uh, seriously, we just need to spend time. Oh, we, you know what we're also trying to do? Uh, sorry, we have one more thing. Um, we are may have an event at um, Tulane. We're thinking about it for the summer in early June. Um, which we don't have a name for, but we can be very reasonably priced in the dorms um, and have a little bit of okay. extra um, and then have people come and have the quilting army us teaching each other all kinds of things because we know a lot of that stuff. That would be fun. And have, you know, yeah. it's in the dorms and have ridiculous things going on at night and, you know, all kinds of stuff going on. But I would love if you're interested to be part of it because it would be so cool. And then we're getting t- trying to get sponsors and have really good food and – you know, it's New Orleans, so, like, food and drink matters to us. Um, I don't drink, but it matters yeah. to others. Um, uh, but, yeah, I think – so I would love for you to come and talk with us about um, learn stuff and play and and uh, give us some um, some help on things. And, I don't know, it would be really fun. So, And that then it's also fun. a national teaching. It'll, it'll, you, it'll count for being, like, on your CV as a national teacher. That's kind of part of what oh, we're trying cool. to do. So um, keep our costs mm-hmm. down. Be collaborative, have everybody sort of pitch in and be willing to do something for an hour or so that um, we don't have to pay people. To, you know what I mean? Like it's, yeah. you know, it's like a pitch in, keep the costs down kind of thing. Um, but again, um, the dorms are beautiful and um, it's a ridiculous thing. And then do a little bit of copyright, a little bit of entrepreneurship um, for everybody so that you get a little mm-hmm. bit out of it and do, you know. So anyway, so think about that, and if it works into your schedule or whatever, it would be super awesome. So we haven't decided, mm-hmm. but we're, we're – does that sound fun to you? That does sound a lot, like a lot of fun. Um, yeah, because they've been t- – I I've always tell my husband, I was like, I need to figure out how to get to New Orleans to totally. visit everybody. Totally, yeah. exactly. So, yeah, so that's really kind of our idea. It's really not too bad of a drive for me. I yeah, mean, I how like- far is it for you for driving? Is it like eight hours, oh, ten that's hours? Not bad. I mean, okay, wait. So wait a second. Yeah. Okay. Now it's really getting boring. New. Uh, tell me where you live again. Where in Oklahoma? Minko. So Minko. I'm a like an hour southwest of Oklahoma City. Okay. Uh, and how far are you from it, um, from Nebraska? From Lincoln? Um. Uh, let's see, we drove through Lincoln not very long ago. It was a year ago. And we were on our way to South Dakota. And I was like, I really want to stop. <laughs> we didn't have time. <laughs> right. It's, um, kind of, it's kind of important. You're I like, mean, um, it's not. <laughs> Lincoln's probably six. Six hours from you? Interesting. Probably. Yeah. Because I'm thinking like Kansas City is like five. So, and Manhattan, Kansas, it's in that four and a half to five hour range. Yeah. But we're thinking um, and about then Lincoln's some... probably two hours north of there. Really? So we're trying to think of some yeah. sort of um, adventure. I'm on sabbatical in the spring, so I'm trying to figure mm-hmm. out a driving yeah. adventure. Um, and I really want to get to Nebraska, but taking the train is really stupid from here. So we're going to try to figure out, like, things to stop along the way, like do a big, big trip um, by uh, by car, I think, mm-hmm. um, hopefully in the spring. So, But it would be fun well, to stop. Well, you'll have and... to stop at Missouri Star on your totally, way up. right? Then. But come see you, yeah. go to Nebraska, pick up people uh-huh. along the way. I have this, like, vision of, like, a big wrapped – it's never going to happen, but my vision is, like, a gargantuanly wrapped bus where I just keep picking up quilting army people. <laughs> 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 where it is, like, a party, that a quilting party amazing. bus. You know, we've, like, we've uh, secured a, a sewing machine down to a table so you can, like, drive and sew. You know, this is my, my dream, mm-hmm. but it's, you know – you know, you got to get somebody who's going to sponsor that, you know? You'd be like, okay, this is what mm-hmm. we need. We need a, we need one of those touring band buses. <laughs> yeah. That's or like one of, the, right, one of those party buses. Exactly. There's a lot of them here in town. So maybe we'll just be like, yeah, we need it to go quilting. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, so have all the lights and stuff. Um, well, you're sa- insanely great. Thank you for all your time today. I just, um, I'm really psyched yeah. about this. And let's keep thinking about sort of, the entrepreneurial side, how do we help long armors, um, you know, how do we help long armors um, from the, our standpoint? That's one of our major projects this uh, this fall and this year. Um, and so let's keep playing. And I'll talk to you more about um, what, what I learn. But I would love for you to be one of, part of our main team of this because I think it's really, Excellent. really fun and interesting. So cool. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. 
All right. I hope you have a great day. I have, you know, you too. got to get back to like all the ridiculous things in life, you know, but this has been fun. This is a good way to start the day. It has been fun. Yeah. I know. I'm like waiting for it to stop thunder because I won't quill if there's like a thunderstorm. You're very I don't smart. Know that we'll... Right. That we, yeah. you know, our house got hit by lightning last year and we lost pretty much everything. I know. And the first thing people were like was, how's the long arm? <laughs> Yeah, it was fine. Um, it was fine, but it made me laugh because it's like they're like not if the house is burned down or if people like. That was the yeah, because you guys had like a ton of damage, right? I mean, like eighty eighty thousand dollars worth of damage to the house. Holy eighty thousand dollars! Everything had to be replaced: the crock pot, the wash and <sighs> washer and dryer, everything, everything, the gas lines, yeah, everything. It was. Next. completely insane we're not i mean that is yeah it was yeah um, but it's a hundred year old house so you know it, we cut nice upgrades at, but we certainly wouldn't <laughs> wouldn't wish it on anybody it was really brutal. You're, yeah you, you weren't planning on it so. no we were not yeah. we were not so yeah well i hope the thunderstorm passes and thanks again for all this time do you need to review this before can i post this are you okay with me posting it oh you're good you're good Go awesome. ahead and post it. fabulous all right This is Elizabeth Townsend Gard, your host. You've been listening to Just Want to Quilt, a research podcast coming out of Tulane University Law School. I want to thank the Quilting Army. Join our Quilting Army. We have so much fun. Um, it's on our Facebook group. We're also on Instagram. Also, the students are back. The law students are back, so we have a lot of stuff going on shortly. And, of course, thanks to all of our sponsors. We try to feature each of you each week. Um, this week, we're looking at AccuQuilt. AccuQuilt is um, hosting our, um, or is our sponsor for our new inventory quilt project, um, who will be commanded by uh, Olson, uh, Willow Olson, and is based on Jessica Quilter's um, inspiration of her inventory quilt. We'll go to our website for more information on that, and of course, I hope you get a chance to quilt today. <laughs>